Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Edgewater Waterford Baptist Circuit online service. Welcome to everyone tuned in. Special welcome to our first time viewers. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our worship team will now lead us in a time of praise and worship. Please sing along with us.
belongs to Sing that together this morning.
darkness, enlighten our minds, give us a right faith, a firm hope, and a perfect charity so that we'll always, in all things, act according to your holy will. Help us to know your will and to do it with courage and faith. We thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us and the many messages that you have been teaching us. We thank you for those who have been delivering those messages, those who will be delivering those messages. Divine Sovereign God, we ask for your continued protection in spite of what is going on, COVID and all. We ask, O oh Lord, that you cover us and protect us as a family. Bless our congregation, community, country, and family so that peace and joy, hope, may thrive in our land and that we may glorify thee. Heavenly Father, we praise you and give you all the glory. We bless you and call upon us to be your people. Thank you, O Lord. Remind us in our heart and guide us in our love and service. Help us to let our light shine before others and lead them to the way of faith. Let us, O oh Lord, have an attitude of gratitude as we give you thanks, O oh Lord, despite of all that is happening. We worship you. Lord, we praise you now and forever. In Jesus' name, and some say amen. Okay. Good Sunday morning, church. And all of you out there in Media Land. I now invite our deacon, Claudette Emmons, for welcome and announcement. Welcome to everyone, whether you are in the sanctuary or you're sharing in this service online. Special welcome to those worshiping with us for the very first time. All those who are in the hearing of my voice this morning. And I'd like to say to those of us in the sanctuary, if you are worshiping with us for the very first time, could you stand and let us acknowledge you? Okay, thank you. Our preacher for today has committed his life to Christ nearly 40 years ago and is currently a member of the Tarrant Baptist Church, where he has been a deacon for many, many, many years. He served as a moderator of the Zion Hill Church and also for the Point Hill Circuit of Baptist Churches, both here in St. Catherine. He presently serves as the president of the Jamaica Baptist Union Brotherhood. He is a development He's a development and environmental economist and has served in the public sector in various capacities, including that of principal director 
of the Climate Change Division. He is presently consultant to the Ministry of Finance and Public Service. As a servant of God, he has committed himself not only to the studying and teaching of the Word of God, but also to put them into practice. He is married to Carol and has two adult daughters. Let us continue to pray for our preacher as he comes to us today. And I ask you to put your hands together and wel help me welcome Deacon Alfred Daly. Please welcome Deacon Daly. So good to have you, sir. Leading our service is one of our own, active, also very committed man of God, Brother Seymour Bailey, Vice President of the Edgewater Baptist Brotherhood. Please welcome Brother Bailey. And I also extend very warm welcome to your family as well, Brother Bailey. Today, the Edgewater Baptist Church Brotherhood has responsibility for the ministry of the service. And so we look forward as they express themselves in the various ways today, capacities today. Let us pray for the men of our church and for men in general. And we pray for those who do not know the Lord will come to know him as Lord and Savior. So put your hands together and welcome the men, those in the sanctuary and those online. We welcome you to those online. As a church, we continue to pray for our sick and shut-in members, their families and caregivers. If you are able, please call Give them a text or a WhatsApp. Yes, they are using text and WhatsApp too. So please, could you please check up on them as well as best you can. If at all you're not well and you are watching online, please know that you are also in our prayers. As a church, as a church family, we express our deepest sympathy to Sister Justina Crooks on the death of her sister. We will hear more about the funeral service at a later date. Please take note of the following. We are being reminded to adhere to the government protocols as it relates to COVID-19 here at the Edwater Baptist Church and as you go about your daily business from um, during the course of this week and beyond. Children's Church today will be at 12.30 p.m. via the Zoom, Zoom plat via the Zoom platform. Please speak with your class leader for further information if needs be. Also, at 6 p.m. today, November 29, the Edgewater Baptist Church Family Bible Hour invites you to a webinar also via the Zoom platform, focusing on the topic, Parenting in a, a Pandemic, Challenges and Opportunities. This will be a panel discussion, and the link has been circulated to our membership. So do please speak to your class leader if it has not been, been made available to you. And please, we are appealing Please, could you circulate this to your family members, friends, and neighbors as well? Thank you so much. Prayer and fasting service will be held here at this sanctuary on Wednesday, December 2, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And all are invited. Please remember, we observe the protocols as it relates to COVID-19. Then on Wednesday also, at 7.30 p.m., there is Bible study as we explore the Daniel story facilitated by our own pastor, Reverend Dr. Dylan Toussaint. Do join us on YouTube, Edgewater Baptist Church. 
the Edgewater Baptist Evangelism and Healing and Counseling Ministries in collaboration with Love 101 FM offers opportunity for prayer and counseling on a hotline established for the purpose. The number to call is 876-220-6474. Please invite those you may know who need this service to call. The number again is 876-220-6474. I also invite you to the Jamaica Baptist Women's Federation invites us to participate in their webinar on abuse awareness and mitigation campaign on Monday, November 30, 2020 at 6 p.m. on the Zoom platform. There's a flyer with the link which will be circulated to you today. Brother Patrick Turner, coordinator of the couples ministry, is expressing sincere thanks to all couples who participated in the evening of prayer last evening. It was a very inspiring session. Worship service in the sanctuary continues on Sunday and every Sunday commencing at 10 a.m. Our church office is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mondays to Thursdays and 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Fridays. At this time, I'd like to just um, read for you from a card from the Leachman's family. Thanks so much. The family of the late Sister Ruby Young would like to say how grateful and thankful we are for your kind expressions, prayers, words of encouragement, and comfort during our time of bereavement. This is to our pastor, Reverend Dr. Dylan Toussaint, and the entire Edgewater Baptist Church family. We say again, thank you for your support during this time of grief. May the peace of God keep us in his care. So thank you for the special way you added sunshine to our lives, to our day. And this is from the, deep, the Leachman's family. At this time, it is my pleasure to just wish for those who are celebrating wedding anniversary during the course of this week, congratulations and blessings and to say we pray that god will see you th through many more years together i would like to wish those online as well as those in the sanctuary and if you're in the sanctuary please stand if you're celebrating wedding anniversary this week and you're in the sanctuary please stand yeah. <laughs> To those of you within the sanctuary and those online as well, if you're celebrating birthday during the course of this week, I wish you much blessing in your, on this, this, your special day. May God bless you. If you're in the sanctuary, we want to see you too. So please stand and let us sing you happy birthday if you're in the sanctuary and celebrating birthday during the course of this week. Please stand and let us sing you happy birthday. Nobody, uh, Mr. Musician, thank you very much to the musicians as well. And God bless you as you go through this week. Please remember, God is your keeper. Have a good day. I'd like to say thanks to the priest and worship team. Did you notice this morning it was all males? All males, did you notice? Right, and as she said, it's today's Brotherhood Sunday, right? Uh, I'd also like to thank Sister Deacon Emmons for the welcome and announcement. At this point, 
we are going to say a prayer for the offering. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless the offerings that each will give. And that it may be used wisely to further your work here on earth and to glorify you in heaven. Bless those who have given and those who are unable to. We thank you for each and every one. In Jesus' name, and the church says, Amen. Are you in need of counseling and prayer in this time of crisis? The Edgewater Baptist Church in association with Love 101 FM, the family station, invite you to call 876-220-6474 if you're in need of prayer and counseling. This is a new ministry of the Edgewater Baptist Church. All youths are invited to our online youth fellowship meetings Fridays at 7.30 p.m. Speak to any youth leader or follow us on Instagram at EBC underscore YF for more information. Please be in touch with your respective class leaders for information and any updates. Remember the sick and shut-ins. Please call if you can and keep them in your prayers. Today, November 29 at 6 p.m., join the Edgewater Baptist Church Family Bible Hour webinar under the topic, Parenting in a Pandemic, Challenges and Opportunities. Panelists include Dr. Arlene Rowe, Dr. Shane Burke, Sister Beverly Harris, and Sister Jennifer Morgan. Join the Family Bible Hour webinar today at 6 p.m. November 29. Contact your class leaders for more information. The Edgewater Baptist Church continues to stand tall as a beacon of hope to many in and around its environs. The church ministry grew and continues to grow. Over the years, the church made improvements to its physical structure. Now, our churchyard needs paving and we need your support. In March, we launched our church paving project. This was since put on hold because of the COVID crisis. If you wish to make a contribution, make your checks payable to the Edgewater Baptist Church or call our church office at 876-988-4734 or send us an email at edgewaterbaptist at gmail.com for more information. The Edgewater Baptist Church, knowing Christ and making Him known since 1978. He's a man of mystery. An interpreter of dreams. He was thrown in the lion's den. Call upon your name, o the three Hebrew boys. Oh, save me! Why did they not burn? The finger writing on the wall. A book written between the 6th and the 7th century BC. It's the apocalyptic book of the Old Testament. Join the Reverend Dr. Dylan Toussaint Wednesday nights at 7.30 for The Daniel Story. A book written by Daniel himself. The Daniel Story, Wednesday nights at 7.30. My son, Kyle Bailey, will be doing special item. And after him, you will hear our preacher, Mr. Albert Daly. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Good morning. Nothing to start yet.
tongue in days we forget to look around us. Some days we can't see the joy that surrounds us. So caught up inside ourselves, we take what we should give. So for tonight, we pray for what we know can be. And on this day, we hope for what we still can see. It's up to us to be the change, and even though we all can still do more, there's so much to be thankful for. There's so much sorrow It's way too late to say I'll cry tomorrow Each of us must find our truth It's so long overdue for tonight we pray for what we know can be and on this day we hope for what we still can see it's up to us to be the change and even So much to be thankful for Even with our differences There is a place where all connected Each of us can find each other's light Tonight we pray for what we know can be, and on this day we hope for what we still can't see. So much more. There's so much to be thankful for. There's so much to be thankful for.
Indeed, it is a fitting song. I believe almost on any occasion. But even now, as we are experiencing times we have never seen before, as people are experiencing challenges that sometimes you don't even know how to deal with them. Despite all of these, there's, there are so many things that we can give God thanks for. God is good. And all the time, God is So let me express my thanks for the members of your brother Bran who invited me to share with you today. I want to also thank the Secretary of the Church for the welcome extended to me. And I trust that as we worship together this morning, you will find this a continuing time of refreshing and blessing from the Lord. Amen? Are you expecting the Lord to speak to you this morning? Well, the scripture makes it very clear that whatever we believe God for, we will receive it as long as it is according to his will. And we are here this morning, I believe, to offer worship and praise, which was such a refreshing time, but also to hear what God may be saying to us in these times. Man, of course, women, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Because sometimes our stomachs can be full. Sometimes we may have had all that we would like to have physically, to eat. But there's nothing to be compared with a word in season from the Lord. It is like water, cool water in a hot desert. So I am come this morning that with expectation and anticipation that by the help of the Holy Spirit, he will speak to us all. So that we leave this place refreshed and encouraged and prepared for the journey ahead. I would like to read a passage for us this morning. It is taken from the book of Samuel. First, Samuel, chapter 2 and verse 2, sorry, verse 12 to 35. It is a little longish, but I think it will be beneficial for us to read it together so that as we share further in the word, uh, the points will just come out much clearer. I am reading from the Revised Standard Version, the Bible, so it may be slightly different from yours. So you may follow with me in whatever translation you have. Or if you choose, just listen. 
Now the sons of Eli were scoundrels. They had no regard for the Lord or for the duties of the priests of the people. When anyone offered sacrifice, the priest's servant would come while the meat was boiling with a three-pronged fork in his hand. And he would thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the fork brought up, the priest would take for himself. This is what they did at Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Moreover, before the fat was burned, the priest's servant would come and say to the one who was sacrificing, give meat to the priest to roast, for he will not accept boiled meat from you, but only raw. And if the man said to him, let them burn the fat first, and then take whatever you wish, he would say, no, you must give it now. If not, I will take it by force. Thus, the sin of the young men was very great in the sight of the Lord. For they treated the offering of the Lord with contempt. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. And the Lord no, took note of Anna. She conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. And the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Now Eli was very old. He heard all that his sons were doing to all Israel and how they lay with the woman who served at the entrance of the tent of meetings. He said to them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all these people. No, my son, it is not a good report that I hear the people of the Lord spreading abroad. If one person sins against another, someone can intercede for the sinner with the Lord. But if someone sins against the Lord, who can make intercession? But they would not listen to the voice of their father. For it was the will of the Lord to kill them. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow, both in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. The man of God came to Eli and said to him, Thus the Lord has said, I revealed myself to the family of your ancestor in Egypt when they were slaves to the house of Pharaoh. I chose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest 
and to go up to my altar to offer incense, to bear and to wear an ephod before me. And I gave to the family of your ancestor all the offerings by fire from the people of Israel. Why then look with greedy eyes at my sacrifice and my offerings that I commanded and honor your sons more than me by fattening yourselves with the choicest parts of every offering of my people Israel. Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel declares, I promise that your family and the family of your ancestors should go in and out before me forever. But now the Lord declares, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. But those who despise me, will I will be treated with contempt. See, a time is coming when I will cut off your strength and the strength of your ancestors' family so that no one in your family will live to old age. Then, is distress, then in distress you will look with greedy eyes on all the prosperity that shall be bestowed upon Israel and no one in your family will ever live to old age. The only one of you whom I shall not cut off from my altar shall be spared to weep out his eyes and grieve his heart all the number all the, no, all the members of your household shall die by the sword the faith of your two sons Hophni and Pinas shall be the sign to you both of them will die on the same day I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. I will build him a sure house and he shall go in and out before my anointed one forever. Everyone who is left of your family shall come to implore him for a priest, for a piece of silver or a loaf of bread and shall say, please put me in one of the priest's place, places that I may eat a morsel of bread. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We acknowledge, O oh God, that you are sovereign, that you are Lord. We acknowledge, O oh God, that it is your desire, Lord God, to feed us with your word as we come before you in worship and praise. So we come before you, Lord. Our hearts are open. Our ears are open. And we look to you by faith. Lord, speak now, for your servants are listening. So let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. If I should put a title to what I'd like to share with us this morning, it would be the dangers of neglecting to fulfill our substantive roles. The dangers 
of neglecting to fulfill our substantive roles. God has given to each one of us various areas of, of responsibility. He has given us the opportunity and the privilege to serve in various areas. And God is not unwise. He knows each one of us. He knows the plan he has for our lives. He knows the potential, the capacity, the giftings he has given us. And so he gives people differently. Responsibilities, gifts, whatever, according to what he knows we can manage. Amen? Work with me now. If I don't hear any amen, I'll keep on preaching, you know. <laughs> I love that, brother. He learns fast. Yes. So we have different areas of responsibility. So let us not think like that person with that one talent, eh? Who says, oh, I am not as important as that one. Oh, I am not as gifted as that person. So I am not going to pay as much attention to the gift that is given to me. Or the responsibility given to me. God has given us various responsibilities. Some of us are parents. Some grandparents. That is a very, very important role. Based on the statistics gathered, not only here in Jamaica, in the Caribbean, but a statistics in other places like in the U.S., it is showing that a number of the children today who are in prison, a number of the young ladies who, became, who become teenage mothers, a number of the youngsters who drop out of school. Youngsters with behavioral problems, disorders, drug abusers. Youngsters who run away from home. A lot of it is as a result of poor or inadequate parenting. And if I should speak from our vantage point as men, Sometimes the neglect on our part as fathers. A lot of the ills in our society can be attributed to failure in this important area of responsibility. I went to the country recently. I was, you know, fixing up the tomb of my parents. And I saw a youngster. I don't think he's 25. We went down there at the, there during a day in the week, you know, before COVID. And he was there, you know, jumping around. And he was trying to impress me. He said, you know, you know, you, you know, boss, I have, I, 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 I have two children already, you know, I have two children already. So he was boasting, not boasting, but he was trying to impress by saying he's a father. I may be small, I may be very young, but I'm a father of two children. But very often, enough attention is not being paid in how we carry out that role. Yes, it is that we can be faithful and diligent parents. But despite our good effort, the children choose their own way eh? and choose to live a way that is inconsistent with what they are taught. In those situations, we can only pray, Lord, fulfill your word, that if we train up a child in the way that they should go, when they are old, <laughs> they'll find their way back home. But we have the responsibility of parents, and many of us, we have responsibilities of leaders in our homes. 
We have the responsibility of being a part of extended families. Where others are looking to us for guidance. Or if they are in difficulties, they're going to say, let me call brothers, my brother or so and so or my sister or let me call uncle or auntie so and so because I believe they can help me. We have roles to play in our families. But you know sometimes our families are left deficient because we are so busy with our own affairs that we forget that we have a part to play in our families. In my family, I am the oldest son. So I see myself as an elder. And as one who has to be in touch with, you know, see what's happening. And where guidance can be given to give guidance. We have a role in that area. We have a role in our local churches. And do you know that sometimes if we fail to deal justly with persons in our settings, if we fail to show mercy as we ought, if we fail to apply the word of God rightly in our situation, and in decisions we make, if we are tending towards being biased in our dealings, we can hurt and injure and stunt the growth of many. Do we know that? So we have a responsibility in our church. We may not be a leader up there. We may just be an ordinary member. But we can make a significant impact on the people around us by sometimes just saying, hello, how are you? How are you doing? Eh? How is it the school? Oh, we are now um, staying at home. How is it? Did you have an instrument? You know, are you in connection? How things are going? We have a responsibility under God. And we have varying responsibilities as the people of God. And therefore, I would like to share with us this morning that we, as God's people, need to be careful lest we neglect to put the emphasis on the areas that God has put clearly before us as eras in which we can make an impact. There is not one single Christian in this place whom God cannot use to make a mighty difference in their situation. You may not be a great preacher. You may not be able to lead Bible study. But you can share your testimony. You can speak truth to others. You can encourage somebody. Every single situation we find and where we are placed, we have a responsibility to make a difference. You know, I hear people, and I work with government, the public sector most of my life, I hear people complain about the politician and wasting um, taxpayers' money, the politician do this and that. My friend, a lot of time in that politician is the people in the workplace who are making a mess of things. And sometimes they are Christians. Tell me which ministry, tell me which agency you, you go to in Jamaica. We don't have a Christian in a significant position there. But are we making a difference in those situations? Is our testimony counting? Are we reserving our, our, our value system to say, boy, uh, I'm not imposing my value on the workplace. Man, God has placed us where we are that we may have a difference. What if Daniel did not continue to serve the Lord? In Babylon, but bow to the idols. What if Shazrak, Meshach, and Abednego abandon their faith and say, I, I, I'm just working with the system, you know? <laughs> no, they stood for principles. And as a result of standing for principles, the king had to say, Release those boys out of the fire, take them out. And you see, his God, he's the only God that deserves to be praised. Because a God who can deliver his children from fire is the true and living God. Why? They dared to stand up and be counted for their faith. I challenge myself. 
we can make a difference. And sometimes we may seem like the bad guy. Sometimes we may seem like the uncooperative person. But as long as we lovingly, carefully, and diligently do what we do, firstly to honor God, God will make a way. My time is almost gone. And I'm just warming up. But let us look at Eli. Who I would put at the center of the story today. Eli. Eli. What is the role of Eli? Eli. In his time. Was the high priest. He was in charge. Of all the priests. That serve in the temple or the place where they worship. So he had a responsibility under God to ensure that what happened in the place of worship is consistent with what God taught. For what was happening? People were coming to worship from far. I said, Yes, you know, I'm coming to the house of the Lord. I'm going to offer my ram because God has been good to me. I am not only obeying the commandment of the Lord to offer my sacrifice, but I'm doing it gladly because the, the, my God has been good to me. And when they go to offer the sacrifice, the priests or his henchmen are saying to them, look man, don't bother, don't bother burn the fat, the, 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 the thing on the fire as is normally done. Cut off my piece, give me now. And I don't want any and any part. I want that part. Cut off that part and give it to me. So can you imagine? They were saying, okay, man, don't get so worked up. Let the thing burn. As God said, he said, the fat is for me. So burn the fat and it will make a sweet smelling savor for me. They said, no, the priest. No, no, no. Cut off my part and give it to me. And if you read the scripture carefully, it was not the priest who was saying that to the people. It was the servants of the priest. But the servants could only say what they are saying because the priest endorsed it and backed it. So sometimes we hide behind the corner and say, it's not me doing it, it's them. But we have the, risk, the authority to, 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 to direct those who are not behaving properly. But sometimes we back off and say, it's them. But in God's eyes, we are held accountable for the neglect of our duties. And so it was. The high priest was supposed to see that things weren't properly in the house of God. But, you know, he's a old man still, you know. At that time, he was near 70. <laughs> so, old man, he probably has, in his younger days, you couldn't ramp with him. <laughs> but, you know, he was sort of, you know, <laughs> not so sharp again. He was supposed to teach the people the statutes. He was the supposed to, to give counsel concerning the will of God to those who come inquiring it. The high priest was supposed to be um, the one who, uh, <coughs> the, the one who sees to it that, um, that, that the, the will of God, the mind of God is revealed when persons come inquiring of the Lord. What is the Lord saying to me? What should I do? The priest was the one who speaks. Can you imagine if you are a worshiper and you come to worship and you see the people treating your, 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 your sacrifice in an inappropriate way? You think you're going to feel happy to go to them and, 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 um, and, and, and ask them to, to, to show the mind of the Lord? You're going to say to them, but if they don't even know how to handle normal um, physical sacrifice, how will, how will they ever be able to speak the mind of God to me? And so sometimes we, 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 we deny others the opportunity of hearing from God, from us. Because when they look at us, when they hear what we are saying, they say, well, I mean, I want to have nothing to do with that ceremony. So we are in challenging times. As was the people of God at that time. And so we see here that Eli was given an assignment as a chief priest, but he failed. His sons had no regard for
for the Lord. Can you imagine the scripture calling the priests scoundrels? Scoundrels, does he call them? No regard for God. And no respect for the duties that they had to carry out. They treated the offering of the people with contempt. Seeking their own interests. If I had time, I'd tell you that the Bible also tells them that this part of the offering belongs to you. Yeah? The shoulder belongs to you. Yes? Yes? And different parts belong to you. But this part, after it is offered, you give it back to the people. Because they came also to worship God and to partake of the offering that they have brought before the Lord. So, these men, these sons, these young men, um, who were sons of Eli, they were not living up to their obligation. But, my friends, if all I can share with you in the time I have is what the condition was of Eli, let me say it as quickly as I can. Because Eli failed as the chief priest. Eli knew that what his sons were doing was not right in the sight of God. The people told him. It, became, it came to the attention as to what was being done wrong. But what did he do? I think it amounts to what we'd call a slap on the wrist. He called him, my sons, what they're doing is not right. What they're doing is displeasing to God. What you're doing is wrong. But what did the scripture say? They didn't pay no mind. Your, your time don't know, man. Our time now. I saw we run things. I saw things must go now. We choose what we want. That was how they reacted. I'm just you know, trying to interpret in our, come, in our everyday situation here. But what was sad too was that as verse 29 of um, 1 Samuel 2 says, uh, he was rebuked because the Bible says he joined with his son. When they, when they took the past from the people that they should not have taken, when they conducted worship in an appropriate way and they carried out, carry out the food, the, 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 the offering, he, Eli, took part of what they took. And so when the judgment was coming, God said to him, look, you cooperated your sons. You made yourself fat from the things, the, the offering that was brought. When you know yourself that they should not be doing things that way. And so God was displeased with, with the high priest. He says, you have honored your sons more than you honor me. You do what pleases them, but you did not do what pleased me. You allowed them to do what they wanted to do, but you did not do what I wanted you to do. So God was displaced. And if I should hasten to say, what were the consequences of it, of their action? The consequence was that God said to, um, to Eli, Eli, because you honored your son, more sons more than you honor me, I am going to bring divine judgment against you and your family. Not one of your descendants will live to see old age. 1 Samuel 2, 31 and 32. All the members of your household will die by the sword. 1 Samuel 2 and verse 33. Ah, the, the iniquity of Eli's house, said the prophet who spoke at the time, shall not be purged with sacrifice or offerings forever. In other words, that's a blot on the name of your family and the history of your family. As long as time lasts, the wrong you have done against God will not be erased because you did corruptly. You disrespected God and you messed up with God's offering. You messed up with the people who came to offer worship. You caused God's name to be dishonored and disrespected. And so the judgment of God came against Eli. And so my friends, what am I saying then? We can learn a few things from this. Because the scripture was written so we can learn from them. So we don't have to make the same mistake that others have made and pay the high price that others have made. 
Eli's challenge is not that he was unaware of the wrongs done by his sons. His problem was not that he was happy with the things that his sons were doing. But his challenge was that he refused or he did not do what was required to bring discipline and order in the house of God. But then, what was easier said than done? He was about 68 years old at the time. And his sons were young men. He may have felt like, boy, it's going to be difficult for me to force these men to behave up with the way they should. Because they probably should have known better. He probably said to himself, if I discipline them, then who will take over? If I remove them from office, who will take over? I don't know what went through his mind. But the fact is that he was caught in a situation where he was not pleasing God. And I'm sure his sons may not be also pleased fully with him. The word of God declares though that it is God that works in us to will and to do his good pleasure. So therefore, what I want to say then that we can learn from Eli is that we need to resolve to take such actions in our homes, in our families, wherever God has placed us and given us responsibility. I'm not talking that we should go in other people's you know, property and do and impose our will. I am talking about where God has placed us and given us responsibility and is requiring of us proper stewardship. Let us resolve in our hearts to do what God requires. Bearing in mind that sometimes we may say, boy, you know, I am unhappy with things as they are. I am discontented with it. I've talked to these boys and I don't know what else to do with them. But if we resolve in our heart to do what God wants, he will make a way. He will make a way. Because the Bible says it is God that works in us both to will, to give us the resolve to do something and also to empower us to do what we need to do. So I'm saying, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever God has placed us, wherever God has placed you, make sure you do what you know in your heart. You don't have to study the Bible to know that, that, that what you need to do. You don't have to read up nothing. You don't have to go to the pastor and ask pastor what we must do. Of course, there are some cases where you probably will need guidance. But some things are very clear before our eyes. Let's resolve in our heart to take action, to do what is required. And if we don't know what to do, or how to do it, that's not a problem still. Because if God puts us in a situation, God can take us out. God knows that maybe Eli couldn't manage the boy of them. So God said, no, I'm going to kill them. The only way to solve the problem is to kill them. Get rid of them. But I'm saying in our situation, we're not to pray for God to kill anybody. Pray that God would lead us to do what is right. Give us the power, the wisdom, the discernment, the understanding to do what is appropriate in the situation so that we can make the impact that he requires of us. Because, remember friend, let's not fool ourselves. It was just himself says, we must all give an account for the deeds that we have done in our bodies. There's coming a day when we shall stand before the throne of God. And God is going to present to us the situation. You are in that situation of responsibility. I was depending on you to make a difference. I was depending on you to speak truth, to do what is right. What did you do? May God help us. That we will not be among those who just bow and follow the crowd. But at least we can say to the Lord, Lord, we did call upon you. Because we didn't have the strength to do what we needed to. But we are trusting you, Lord, to help us, to show us what to do. And God, we thank you because you showed us a way out of the problem. So I'm saying to us this morning, we can learn from the situation of Eli. We don't have to... And in a situation where we are powerless and helpless and can't do nothing. 
Let us do with our might what our hands find to do. And trust in God to help us to do what is beyond our ability. Eli could manage Samuel. Samuel was an obedient boy. Although he was given to Eli or given to the Lord at an early age, probably about four to six years old. I'm sure by the type of mother he had, I'm sure she would have taught him things and modeled things for him. Because my friend, sometimes it is not so much what we say to those around us that makes a difference. It's how we behave, what we do, what we say. And sometimes people say, if him treat him brother so, and them are church brother, church brethren, what about me? I have nothing to do with that man. <laughs> I'm, not I'm just pointing in that direction. <laughs> so my friends, I need to wrap up. I need to make the point that this. There are other things I have in mind, but just one thing. I leave then. Whenever we find ourselves in an area of responsibility and we find that we have come in on a challenge to do what is right, let us not take the easy road and walk away or stay there and accommodate the wrong because of some gain that we might think we are getting. Because people don't respect us when, when they see us bow into slackness, you know. They don't respect us when we stand up for principle. Yes. And so, I am challenging you all and challenging myself. As we face our areas of responsibility and the role that have been assigned to us, whatever they may be, let us seek first to please God. Let us seek to depend upon Him for His guidance, for His help. Because He who has called us is faithful and He will accomplish and complete that which concerns us. So if God calls us to make a certain difference, he is going to give us the wherewithal to carry through the journey. So the very same people who may be reeling at us at one point, maybe the people who have to come back and say, boy, I respect you, you know. I respect your dad. Amen. So we give God thanks. We give God thanks. May the Lord help us in all our dealings to be courageous, to do not in a vulgar way or a rough shadded way, with all the love we can muster, but all the determination that is required. Let us do what God by His Spirit has made it clear to us that we need to do. Amen. Father, I come to you this, after, this afternoon, this morning, along with your people, Lord, to present ourselves. We have heard your word, Lord, but that is only part of the process. We need to align ourselves with your word and to receive grace from you to put it in practice. So now, Almighty God, release now your grace and your favor that as we have heard your word, we will not only rest at being hearers, but we, by the power of your Holy Spirit, will become doers of the word. So help us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. The closing song, it may sound like a men's hymn, 
but you can interpret it liberally. Rise up, women of God. Rise up, women of God. Rise up, people of God. And while the song is being sung, the Lord moves you. And you are saying to him, Lord, I see some areas where I can, I need to shape up better. But I need divine help to do that. I need the help of the Holy Ghost to make a difference as you want me to. Come, let us pray together and trust God to give us the grace. Rise up, O men of God. I've done with lesser things. Give heart and soul and mind and strength to serve the King of Kings. Rise up, O men of God. His kingdom tarries long. Bring in the day of brotherhood. and among these your people that there will be a liberal outpouring of grace Lord God to every man every woman, every boy every girl everyone in this place Lord God who desires Lord God to walk faithfully before you in whatever area of responsibility you have called them give them the grace they need Lord, give them the anointing they need Give the wisdom they need, God. Give the revelation that is needed. Give the insight that is needed. And certainly, Lord, give the courage that is required to do what pleaseth you. Oh, Lord, let your kingdom come in this church. Let your kingdom come in this congregation. Let your kingdom come in every household represented here. Let your kingdom come in every family represented in this congregation. Let your kingdom come in every workplace represented here. Let your kingdom come in every community represented here. Let your name be glorified, Lord. Grant grace to every waiting heart now. And may your kingdom and come and your will be done. And your great name be glorified. We commit those who may be here, Lord, who do not know you as Lord. 
Father, even now, cause your grace to be revealed to them in a special way. That they, O oh God, will receive you as their Lord and their Savior. And commit their lives to serve you fully and faithfully. This day, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you will join us again as we worship together. Please remember to pray for each other. There is power in prayer. Have a blessed week in the Lord.